Necro here on his ECD. Woo, command the Dread Horde. I see. That's pretty cool. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today, we are playing Esper Walkers. This means white, black, and blue. Uh, walkers signifies the fact that we're playing Planeswalkers as well. So, black Planeswalkers, white Planeswalkers, blue Planeswalkers, and of course, our boy Ugin, which is a colorless Planeswalker. As always, we're going to break down the list in its entirety. What of all uh, of each of the individual cards do? Then we're talking about the deck strategies and synergies. How do all of those cards work together to form a coherent archetype? Finally, we're into the gameplay footage where we break down all of the different interactions and playlines within the new Corset 2021 meta. And then of course we do have our final thoughts as well where we talk about uh, any deck upgrades, alternative build paths, our plans for future content, etc., etc., etc. If you find any value within this video, it'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up, easy as that, and share it out to a friend who you think might also find some value from it. Esper Walkers starts out with a single copy of Elder Spell. This is a sorcery for two black sources. Destroy any number of target Planeswalkers. Choose a Planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each Planeswalker destroyed this way. Into our three drops, three copies of Narset Parter avails our first legendary Planeswalker, coming in with five loyalty. A static ability, each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn, minus two. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among it. Put it into your hand and the rest into the bottom of your library in a random order. <laughs> two copies of Cry of the Carnarium Sorcery. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Exile all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. If a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So that's a great way to deal with the Cat Oven. Necromantia, a sorcery. Choose a card name other than a basic land name. Uh, search your opponent's graveyard. Hand and library for cards of the name, exile them, and then that player shuffles their library and creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. Four copies of Teferi Time Raveler, four loyalty when he comes in, static ability, each opponent can cast spells only anytime they could cast a sorcery, plus one until your next turn you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash, and minus three return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand and draw a card. Two copies of Kaya or Javi Surfer, Coming in with three loyalty, no static ability, plus one. Exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life if at least one creature card was exiled this way. Minus one, exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. And a minus five, Kaya or Jav Usurper deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and you gain that much life. Two copies of Oath of Kaya. This is an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you deal three damage to any target and gain three life. Whenever an opponent attacks a Planeswalker you control with one or more creatures, Oath of Kayat deals two damage to that player and you gain two life. On to our four drops, three copies of Shatter the Sky. Each player who controls a creature with power four or greater draws a card, then destroy all creatures. Two to Fairy Masters of Time. This has a static ability of, you may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi on any player's turn, anytime you could cast an instant. It comes in with three loyalty. Plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Keep in mind, you can do this on your turn and your opponent's turn. So on the turn you get him back, uh, it'll be a five going to six, which is quite powerful. Minus three, target creature you don't control phases out, treat it and anything attached to it as though it didn't exist. Enter the battlefield effects do not re-trigger. We have two copies of Extinction Event. This is a sorcery. Choose odd or even, exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. Two copies of Ashiok, Nightmares Muse. This is a five cop, five, Mana cost Planeswalker coming in uh, with five loyalty plus one. Create a two, three blue and black nightmare creature token with whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. Minus three return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that player exiles a card from their hand. Minus seven, you may cast up to three spells from among face up cards your opponent owns from exile without paying their mana cost. And of course, we have to have three copies of Elspeth Conquers Death and Enchantment. When it hits the battlefield, exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. On the following upkeep, non-creature spells your opponent's control, cast two more to cast until your next turn. And then on your third and final upkeep, return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
put a plus one plus one loyalty counter on it. We do have a few six drops, three copies of Shark Typhoon, another enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Cycling for two plus X, and whenever you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, which is very cool. Two copies of Liliana Dreadhorde General, a loyalty F6 Planeswalker static ability. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card, plus one, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token, minus four, each player sacrifices two creatures, and then minus nine, each opponent chooses a permanent they control from each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. Uh, we're talking land, enchantment, creature, artifact. Uh, those are different permanent types, correct? We also have a single copy of Ugin the Spirit Dragon, because why not? Seven loyalty when it comes in, plus two, three damage to any target, minus X, Exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's more than one color, so you can't do colorless spells, which is the uh, workaround here. And minus 10, you gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. So that is, that's pretty deadly. Um, the lands in an Esper deck are pretty hardcore. We've got a single Castle Vantress, a single Island, four Hollowed Fountains, four Temple of Enlightenments, four Godless Shrines, four Temple of Silences, four Watery Graves, and four Interplanar Beacons. That's the deck list. So let's begin to break down the deck strategy because, um, you know, Esper Walkers is one of the more uh, complex situations uh, that you're going to run into as a deck style. I think it's still easier than the control variant of the deck um, just because you do receive more value from your Planeswalkers and you're not really having to prioritize your counter spells. Uh, where here we're just using removal, very easy to determine when to do that. and you play your planeswalkers when uh, available so the decision making process isn't that hard but i still feel this is a little bit uh um harder to play than an aggro deck just because of all of the different decision making processes and opportunities for mistakes that present themselves within uh the gameplay so let's begin by talking about locking out your opponent we can lock out our opponent's draw with narset each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn so we're playing more of the game than he can. We have access to do more things than he can. So we're shutting out his draw. That's really, really helpful. Teferi shuts down any instances. This is also really, really helpful. Each opponent can cast spells only anytime they can cast a sorcery. So that means no instances, nothing on the stack, uh, nothing like this, right? So we can shut out his draw. We can shut out his instant speeds. A lot of decks right now are using Uro um, or Croxa, primarily Uro though. And uh, Kaya Orjav Usurper is really, really nice for this. Um, XL target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. That doesn't take out Uro. Uh, I was thinking about the ovens, the cat oven, the uh, Cauldron Familiar and the Witch's Oven. The minus one takes out the Witch's Oven, which then kind of makes the Cauldron Familiar almost useless, right? Because it's about cycling it with the oven, which creates the food. And then the plus one is what I was uh, originally mentioning, where it takes out the Uro from his graveyard so he can't replay it later with its escape cost. So that's very, very nice. And not only does it take the Uro if it's already played, but it will keep his graveyard trimmed so he can't uh, double play because these ramp decks will get to the point where they could play a three drop Uro, send it to the grave, and then drop it again for four. Um, so it's really nice to be able to keep their graveyard at a minimum it also helps to fight Elspeth Conqueror's death. If there's no creatures, you take out the Planeswalkers because then they're not bringing it back with ECD, which is quite oppressive as well. So a lot of really nice um, oppressive interaction within Kaya Orjav Usurper. Again, not really doing anything for us other than having a Planeswalker on the field. It's all about kind of shutting down what your opponent has uh, the options or availability to do. Uh, with that being said, it's gonna leave them to the point where like, well, I'm gonna play a lot of creatures, right? I'm gonna hit these planeswalkers, get them off the field and uh, kill my opponent. This is where we run into all of our field wipes. We have Cry of the Carnarium. That's gonna help you stay alive, right? This not only deals with a lot of the aggro decks, but Cauldron Familiar, again, when we come full circle to this, uh, things played with Luris. Whenever something dies this turn, exile it instead. This is incredibly helpful um, and also, includes more exile synergy within the deck because we do have um you know kaya that can deal the minus five which is cards uh equal in exile damage to your opponent's face which is pretty cool and then uh, we also have necromantia which exiles and then ashok which exiles as well so there's a lot of exile synergy within the deck so it's really cool uh to be able to lock out some of those 
low to the ground, sacrifice decks, anything that kills Priest of the Forgotten Gods in my book. Absolutely perfect, right? Um, but then we do have a little bit higher, which Extinction Event comes to mind. Now, I really like running Extinction Event because sometimes Nissa hits and sometimes she gets her ultimate off before we can find our ECD. So Extinction Event will still exile um, those indestructible lands that she creates, right? Um, because Ugin's minus t uh, X will not deal with the lands. Even though they're colored lands, they remain colorless, uh, which is a little bit of a thing with Ugin. So Ugin's minus X will not deal with the lands. Shadow of the Sky will not deal with the lands. If they have indestructible on them, Extinction Event will deal with the lands. Um, and that brings us directly to Shadow of the Sky. That's going to clean up everything. They're going to draw a card if there's a creature with power four or greater, which really is uh, nothing but a thing, right? So there's lots of removal there. Uh, we also have single target removal within Oath of Kaya. That's going to kill things really easily. We talked about uh, Kaya Orzhov Usurpers minus one on one cost permanence, which is really nice. Uh, Ugin can plus to kill things, and then Liliana has minus four to have our opponent sacrifice two creatures. Um, so that's our main forms of removal. Then we come into our bounces. Teferi's minus three is going to bounce a creature. Uh, Teferi's minus three here is going to phase out a creature. So that's a, a nice way to survive there as well. Ashiok's minus three bounces a creature to their hand and then they have to discard. If you do the minus three on a token creature, the token can't go to his hand because it isn't a card. So it goes to the grave and then he still has to discard. So it's like a two for one if you can bounce a token with Ashiok's minus. And uh, yeah, I guess you could cycle Shark Typhoon uh, for a chump blocker as some form of removal or protection of your Planeswalkers as well. So that gets us through that part, right? We talked about stacking our Planeswalkers, getting those uh, nice value engines out, and then protecting them with all of the removal. Now we uh, are in a position to already know what kind of deck our opponent's playing because we played three to four turns of it. We know the meta because we're well-educated. Uh, we play the game quite a bit we can now incorporate Necromantia. What does their deck focus around that we want to shut down? Do they have an Elder Spell of their own? Do they have an Ugin of their own? Uh, because Ugin's minus X will kill all of our Planeswalkers, right? So what are they running that really shuts us down? Is it a Wilderness Reclamation, Expansion Explosion, right? Um, just whatever deck they're running, you want to determine their biggest threat uh, and then deal with it accordingly with Necromantia. In our case, we always love to go for Ugin. Uh, because Ugin shuts us down with that big minus X and kills all of our Planeswalkers, which is disgusting. There's not too many things that will annihilate Planeswalkers. There's Planar Cleansing, obviously, and then an Elder Spell if he has it, but that's unlikely. Uh, so I really like to prioritize Ugin with our Necromantia, especially in the current meta. Um, the bummer is that Bant runs Nyssa, so you're going to have to deal with that as well. You're also going to have to run uh, this to take out... Casualties of War, if it is a Saltai deck, right? Because the Casualties of War can really uh, take control of our deck. Kill an enchantment, kill a Planeswalker, kill a land. Um, so that's less than ideal. So those are a few of my favorite targets. Nyssa, Ugin, Casualties of War uh, for Necromantia. That brings us to our Shark Typhoon. Shark, Shark Typhoon is great. It can kill a Teferi. You're able to cycle Shark Typhoon while Teferi is in play to make that uh, flying creature on his turn when normally you couldn't play a flash creature and then he's already minus and now you can get the kill on his Teferi. That's great. This card's also great if you don't play against the Teferi. If you don't play against Casualties of War, no enchantment removal, then this card is great. It's a powerhouse. Um, making those sharks for you is gonna really help uh, close the game out quite early. But do not be afraid to just cycle this. It's a draw. If you have open mana, it's a great play. You get the field uh, presence as well. So I really like Shark Typhoon as a cycle and then only play it as an enchantment if you know your opponent doesn't have anything to deal with enchantments, right? Because there's no need to be wasting six mana on a Teferi Bounce. Uh, that's absolutely ridiculous. Do not be afraid to discard some of your better cards with Teferi's plus one ability. Any discard can be used to discard our Planeswalkers like Ugin, like Liliana, because they're brought back with phase three of Elspeth Conquer's Death. Right, return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on it, uh, which is really, really good there. That is basically it, you guys. Um, as far as ultimates, they're all broken. If you can build up to any ultimate, absolutely go for it. You're gonna win the game uh, regardless. The land is a little bit tricky 
Interplan or Beacon does provide a lot of sustainability and keep you alive while you're finding your removal. However, we've also been burned, um, for example, not being able to play, play our Cry of the Carnarium. But uh, land is land and it's never always perfect. We played a lot of matches with it and I think it is a very well balanced deck. You should have no trouble winning games in best of one ranked with this. I've been playing it in Mythic all day, just like crushing people uh, match after match after match. So we've got some really great gameplay footage for you guys today. I hope you enjoy. Yesterday we played Esper Lockout with nine lives, which was a lot of fun. Still going to exile the Ugin with Necromantia. And then tomorrow, I believe we are playing Simic Flash. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified of our future uploads. We're live on YouTube every single morning, 6 a.m. Mountain Standard. At 7 a.m. we do go live on Twitch and then we're in the Discord for the remainder of the day. Links for everything, you guys, is in the description below. Thank you so much for your continued time and attention. Your support is absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm truly grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoy today's gameplay footage and we'll talk to you in a little bit with my closing thoughts. Stay tuned. Opponent goes first. It's never fun. It's a pretty fun hand, though. I don't mind it. You know, I almost don't think we need to shatter the sky. We may as well keep it, though. You never know. Is it going to be uh, maybe a veto deck? It could be. Two Temples of Silence might not necessarily be Esper, right? So let's let's keep rocking it slow. We'll, we'll hold on to these field wipes. Worst case scenario is we don't use them. Three Temple of Silences. Wow. Woof. I don't mind Shark Typhoon either, to be honest, especially on a dead field. What's he gonna play? All right, let's get our Teferi in play. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Let's just take our minus right away on nothing, so he gets his value. Two typhoons, we can cycle them. Okay, first ECD hits, that's fine. Only time. It's always better to play the second than the first. Orja of Prison. Lots of exile effects here. Mmm. I'm looking for new minions. Care to volunteer? I'm gonna toss my event. And he mind. does have creatures, it appears. Interesting. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. This will be six. Huh. Let's play it really weird. Normally, sh cycling the shark is ideal. He's milling us, which is absolutely ideal because now our Elspeth Conquers Death has a target to take out of our library. Prior to his mill, we did not. The Wanderer. Okay. Um, exile creature. Not um, non land permanent, planeswalker, anything like this. So I think we're okay there. Um, and I'm going to toss the sh Shatter. I know that's probably bad manners. Sorry. Maybe the land could have went there as well, but... Narset hits, which is, like, absolutely amazing. Necro here... on his ECD. Woo! Command the Dread Horde. I see. That's pretty cool. Um, we could draw for f four. So 
So that costs six, uh, which he has. I'm uh, not too worried about those coming back. And we've got nothing for him to take. Okay. Oh, don't you just love the smell of death? <laughs> I think we're having a meltdown. Uh, minus X minus X is only two, right? Because um, he's only got the two cards in his grave. And he does go in with his command. Right? And then he's gonna... Minus again on the shark? Question mark? We mill ourselves a little bit here. He gets our other necro, which is pretty good. Doesn't get the draw from Narset though. And now our shark dies. Get out of my way already. We're gonna cycle this for one. Oh uh five and one still uh can both be eaten by our vents, or we could even just uh get our lovely lady out there. All right, Liliana can minus four, kill both creatures. We kill our shark though. Whatever. It happens. Then Narset can take the draw. Teferi's perfect. Land in the field, we have no play for two, so it comes untapped. Really? Another command the Dread Horde? That's pretty cool. He should have pressed his other Liliana first. Or no, then he would have had to discard his Dread Horde, I see. So he snags our Elder Spell. That's a bummer. Um, as far as discarding, let's... Well, they both... They both are really good. Let's toss our cry, I guess. Um, just in case something else comes of it. Odd, please. The shark is even, so it stays. Rise and shine. Let's play our Teferi in. More shark, more life. Take the scry. It takes impressive Ugin stays. And then we're gonna draw it with our Narset. Put thoughtfulness before action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, let's toss the land. Uh, the Wanderer can exile one of the sharks, I guess. The Burglar. <laughs> Shark's dead, we get to draw. You can okay. Scream if it hurts too much. Exile, we don't get to draw. But we'll take the draw through to Fairy instead. Toss our Teferi copy. Let's play Ugin, and he will concede at this point. Make an 8-8 shark. Seems viable. Let's plus kill the burglar. Leona can plus. Teferi can plus. Um, did we not do damage to this guy? Oh, prevent all non-combat damage. <laughs> I see. That's on me, brother. Oops. You can do it. Come on. There we go. They were a lousy servant anyway. K 
killing my shark. Time to meet your getting use out of his wanderer. Um, unfortunately, is like not enough though, right? We're definitely on the cutting edge here of this match. Even though we both have planeswalkers, ours are just Adjusting higher value. As queen of the dead. Shark Typhoon is incredible as well. And we're still at 23 cards, so it's no worries. Frey goes up, land goes. That's it. Five five shark, exiling his card, bringing a planeswalker back for us. Oof. Even more powerful next time. Can we? S yeah. Okay. It hits some. More zombies. More draw. That's a hard choice. I want to keep all of those cards, right? And Enforcer, that's fine. Let's take our draw again. Land goes. We're at 17 still. Burglar in the house. He's getting those mills. Maybe we mill ourselves. We'll have, we'll have to see. No, good game. <laughs> All right, I'm worried we're gonna get burned again. We're lacking our black sources, and we've seen how that affected us off the start last match. Oh, uh, this is annoying because of uh, Call of the Death Dollar, right? Just brings it back from the grave as a 5 5. <laughs> yeah, nice, bro. So we're gonna try to cry them. We do need these black sources of mana, though. Hopefully, he doesn't go too fast. The cry will snuff out the cats as well. Uh, which is really nice. It's just gonna be a matter of can we get to our land in time. And now, I've run this deck without Interplanar Beacons, and it actually really helps uh, that whole situation out. We're gonna pay for life here. Just to get it in the field in case we draw our next block source next turn. Narset comes out, it's gonna My take the priority of his time. vessels away from our health, so... It's like we didn't really have to pay any life. And, uh, you know what, I'll take Teferi here. We can phase the 5-5 five five demon out if it does hit the field. Ideally, we just pull a swamp off the top and then uh, we have dealt with them. Never to be worried of again. Okay, so we know he's got like, yeah, Mayhem Devil, Claim the Firstborn, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, just pretty gross stuff. <laughs> okay, so we can't take the draw, but still neither can he, unless he sacks one with the oven. And then the Mayhem's Devil will ping it to death. Just wait a moment. Or he could just play Cat and Oven that. Negative. Because Mayhem Devil's on the field? I'm gonna shatter. That's the only reason. Yeah, so we're going to take that damage. Narset dies. And I'm sure he has called the Death Dweller. And he wants to bring those two vessels back. 
But by doing that, it keeps his devil in the graveyard. So he's either got to pick the two five fives, which he does, or the devil. Probably should have cried like we talked about, but I mean... Yeah. I was uh, a little bit too concerned with Mayhem Devil, I think. Too many to let another happen. So we're gonna go down to nine to ferry off the field. Yeah, I definitely should have cried. I don't know why I was so scared. We're going to take our draw here still. He has to attack with both of them if he wants to kill. Uh, we're going to throw a Elder Spell here. He'll take the two foods. He's got a graveyard ready to play it as well. Just looking for another shatter. Let's bounce this. Nothing. Feels good. Uh, <laughs> Let's try to take the sky again. So we're taking two damage here, confirmed. We can... Uh, Probably ECD this Kroxa. Okay. This is very good. <laughs> We're gonna do this on his turn. I've got time. So we have to do the extinction event before Croxa has the chance to attack. So we're doing it before his attack phase, right where he goes to combat right here. Um, and then yeah, we're just, we're going even. And that's like a lot of fun for us. <laughs> Liliana hits the field. She's gonna make us discard. We do have the Teferi to toss and holding on to the ECDs as priority. Day, my minions. Land for the scry, that's fine. Uh, already having a Teferi on the field does help. The sting of tossing one. I mean, it sucks to throw an R set too, especially when we don't have one. But um, 
Sarah it's just such a powerful pickup. Just to take that with an ECD. I love it. Yeah, right? Good game. We stabilize with five life and uh, are able to get the win. Woohoo! So this is a weird situation. There's not a lot of land here, and we would basically have to top deck our way into affinity. So I'm going to mulligan this, and I think three land is a lot better. Aller spell is an endgame event. We don't even have Planeswalkers in our hand, so let's toss that. We still get to scry, but now we have all of our land colors still holding removal. We're going to take uh, Do- or uh, not Dovin. Or is it Dovin? No, Vito. <laughs> I would think of Dovin's Vito. We're taking Vito of the uh, Rose Dusk Thorn. Whatever. You know what I mean. The uh, Ultra Broken Vampire from Corset 2021. Whenever you gain life, you're going to deal that much damage. And you can tell uh, he's running black and there's a lot of life gain on the field. That's, that's basically that. Um, so... Put into exile is really good here. Uh, I, I quite like that. A little bit of removal there. That's nice. So like uh, Kaya's ghost form really dodges cry quite nicely. And there's the veto. Uh, we knew it. We knew it. We knew it. Um, it's odd, odd, odd though. So that's not the worst. And Yeah, let's just hit home. I mean, it's slow and it sucks because I'd rather wipe the field. But I think it should just be our priority um, to deal with Dovin. Not Dovin, Vito, right away. I'm going to call him Dovin forever. He's like the exact opposite archetype. He's not gaining life or making uh, chump blockers. He's, he's doing damage. Okay, so he's right back in play. You gotta love that. And another vessel. This guy has fun. Uh, we are dropping our extinction event here. Hitting him for odd. Uh, his vessel does come back though. And I believe it comes back as a 5-5, five, five, doesn't it? Oh no, it doesn't because it didn't come back from the grave. It came back from exile instead, so that's a lot of fun. Dodging uh, that effect there. He's down to one card. It's Idolon. We're going to wipe with Cry. And let's game. Unless he top decks uh, into Eternity. Nope, it's a land. Let's roll. Demonic Embrace. Luris. Okay, Luris is where we want to go. We need a fifth lance, pretty bad. expensive removal this activates our Elspeth Conqueror's death uh, we're just trying to keep a creature off the field so demonic embrace can't hit it he's plenty of life so this castle lock point is really helping him um, <laughs> two shatters and an Elspeth though so that's pretty nice Ashuk in play now he's still 41 so we've got a lot of work to do on his library Hopefully no Luris is the thing. Luris into a, a Kaya would be annoying. Ooh, five damage there. Oh! Another five damage. Loving it. Let's 
Land can go. We take a land and a call of the Death Dweller. Let's plush our plus our Ashiok again. We have nothing in our graveyard for Elspeth to hit, so let's just leave it in our hand. The burglar. All right, all right. We do have the two shatters still, so as long as there's nothing with haste. We get to minus uh, our Ashiok on this burglar if we want. Yeah, see, now that's the fun, because... Um, Whenever a permanent you control dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Well, what if we don't exile it? What if we just pop it to his hand? Now his ghost form and his embrace go to the grave. Right? Because there's no creature for them to be attached to. And it didn't go to the graveyard or to exile. Right? So that's a lot of fun. Okay, we pull out two, three, four creatures there off the top. Don't mind if I do. And then we have lethal next turn. I wonder if he... No, he can't pay the life for it. That would be cool, though. He's got no life. Oh, he does. No, he doesn't. No life gain. Ha! Let's smash his library. Another four, please. Okay, we get two more creatures, plus a ghost form. We do two damage. Now we shatter. Lurus annoys me, so we're taking that. He's got uh, some pretty cool stuff going on here, though, right? Call of the Death Dweller. If only we didn't have another Shatter. He just takes the Burglar for two. Didn't he have a one drop in there to take? Oh, no. Ha! Oh lord. Let's uh let's mine this out. I require servants. Your corpse will volunteer. There's no life gain, so we can attack first just for the uh the mill effect on him. Two Italons, that's nice. We still have 42 cards left as well, so there's really no problem. Let's take the draw. Land. Let's scry another land out of the way. Minus four, kill both of his creatures. And then plus our... Dearest Ashiok. Your fears are given for 
he gets an Italon. Very nice. He can't pay for his Embrace, so it just needs to sit there. And we finally drop Ugin. Good game. <laughs> That's the best combo, is you play Ugin, and then you use his zero ability, which is a uh, good game. And that actually just, uh, you automatically win right there. <laughs> Okali dokali. Uh, this hand's kind of weird. I mean, we do have plenty of removal. Nothing else, though. These beacons are basically useless. We do need that secondary swamp as well. Let's keep it. Just kind of maybe ignore the Cry of the Carnarium and only use that like as a utility card. Is this like rogue? Let's just keep prioritizing removal. Um, trying to find that second black source. I feel like it's gotta be. Well, this isn't a rogue, but it does eat our hand. Was that a black source? You jerk. Okay, so let's take. Um, his focus, focus to our Narset. That's going to be helpful. Keep an open mind. I think he's going to play pretty low to the ground. I'm not sure that, uh, you know, he's got the three plus drops. So I don't want to prioritize too many Elspeths. Well, I guess he can play our cards. <laughs> Should have kept it. He's going to play our own Teferi. <laughs> okay, so we're going to clean the field here. Um, and hopefully none of these cards get played before we do so. Right? Um... Okay, he, play, he plays his Teferi. Very funny. Ha ha ha. <laughs> right, you can't draw because Narset, so... I mean, you do just get to plus him and now discard a card. <laughs> Plusing one to discard a card. That's a lot of fun. Um, a really good play. It's a good thing because he's got too much value on the field anyways. Let's take our Narset again. Meditate. Shark Typhoon's okay. fine. And now let's just, I guess, make a quick play to reset the field. Uh, Teferi can't minus on one of his, so it's just going to plus. Uh, the plus will actually work this time because it's on my turn and he's not, and he didn't do it. So he was actually supposed to plus his Teferi on my turn as well. And, you know, we can't blame him. It's, it's my Teferi he's playing with. It's not his own, so maybe he's not super familiar with it. And it is uh, Grixis Rogues. Very interesting. Does he have access to this always? No. Let's just take it. As long as Narset remains on the field, Teferi's kind of not entirely useful for him. Coming a tapped here. He probably is scared to plus his Teferi because he doesn't want to draw or discard anymore needlessly. So Narset will die here. We'll gain some life. He'll take some damage. And then he gets that card back because whenever he attacks with the rogue, it becomes available. You 
are a mighty warrior. That's really I annoying for me. Oh, he gets one of our fairies. Where's that elder spell? What a dirty dog. I have a plan. Crazy guy. All right, so let's just bounce to fairy first. Let's take that and play nice and slow. Liliana can take care of creatures, so can Cry. Um, this Teferi becomes the issue, and I think that we're going to need to cycle our Shark Typhoon into it. Oh, he gets to play that other Teferi. Oof, okay. Um, <laughs> shit. Right? This is uh, still a match somehow. Narset will help. The Sora Narset Shadows draw. We're gaining enough life to kind of offset any damage he does. We just need to deal with his value engines. Uh, no. <laughs> both of my Teferis. <laughs> I think we'll just take another Narset here. That's quite nice. And then we're going to minus on the Dodger with Kaya. Thank you. I'm gonna make you suffer. So I'll be back. Just you wait. Ideally, Teferi Minus is on our Elspeth or our Oath, right? The thing about rogues is a lot of them have haste as well, so I could be <sighs> right <laughs> as I as I live and breathe. All right, so he's doing some damage here. Narset dies. Kaya goes down. He takes plenty of damage here, which is nice. We're going to gain a lot more life. Try that again. I won't forget I dare you. Together. If he bounces this ECD, I will jump for joy. We're going to Liliana, I think. Oh, he discarded a robber. That's interesting. No, I am not making this up as I go. Take our Narset immediately back. <laughs> oh, thank you kindly, sir. If you wish to surrender now. Now, there's a, a weird argument here. And I think we leave our Kaya on the field. Right? We just play right into our Liliana. Minus four. Both creatures die. Now we can start plussing and gaining a little bit of life here. Let's get rid of these annoying rogues. I guess the one's a specter. Uh, it could be a rogue, Thief of Sanity, for all I care. <laughs> right? I'm gone for now, but not forever. And then we can, uh, you know, take our lovely draw with Narset. With thoughtfulness before action. Uh, we should probably take Cry, but we have one, so I'll take a Teferi instead. The Enforcer. I think we still have plenty of cards in our library. He takes an Ugin. Um, that's kind of good for our ECD, having that in the grave. Doesn't draw from Narset, and he just discarded his last card. Let's try this. Forgetting about Narset sucks. Good game though, right? As for Walker, is really representing in Corset 2021. All right, um, keeping this just based on the removal, 
We're missing black sources, which, I mean, kind of sucks, but... Castle Vantress is a huge advantage. Definitely still looking for a black source. We get the immediate good game. Nice. Ooh! He's on the play as well, so... If we see a cavalcade here, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> this is the power of mono red, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and we don't have the black sources. If Cry could have been played, uh, maybe we could have gone through this. Nice! This guy will not stop. Straight up four turned. <laughs> Doesn't even care. He's like, I'll kill the fairy. <laughs> what a guy. Welcome to Mono Red, ladies and gentlemen. All right, what did you guys think of Esper Walkers? This was one of my most popular videos so far. Um, I think this version is even better. If you put the old version up against this version, I think we might win. Necromantia just seems to be a huge addition. Unmoored Ego was a little bit slippery because you just have them draw, uh, which isn't ever beneficial. You wanna really take away your opponent's draw engines and not uh, support it. So Necromantia is great. We already have all of the creature removal, so having them make the 2-2 zombie if it was in their hand is no big deal because then we just clean it up anyways while building into all of our oppressive planeswalkers. Narset's broken, Teferi's broken, other Teferi is like on the edge of being broken. Ashiok has huge synergy with all of the discards uh, like Necromantia, like Kaya. <laughs> like there's so much in here for discard that it's not even funny, or sorry, exile, I mean. Um, so yeah, like just an incredible deck filled with removal, um, filled with some of the most powerful planeswalkers uh, within the game, which is great. So let me know what you think of Esper Walkers, you guys. Uh, I had a great time playing this deck and I hope you do as well. Make sure to stay tuned for the channel, uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the bell icon, all those great things. Tomorrow we're playing Simic Flash and then we have a little bit of a brawl break. After that, we're gonna be trying to make more historic content, more brawl content, more free to play content for you guys, and more general guides, which are gonna help uh, support your knowledge base and all of that as well. So I really appreciate your continued time and attention, you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Everybody who's gone out of their way to start supporting me financially, uh, it definitely goes noticed and uh, you know we're just putting all of those proceeds back into the project, which is really, really cool. And we're looking to expand at an exponential rate this year. So I hope you're holding on, buckle in, and get ready for the ride. Thanks again. Uh, we're live every single morning, 6 a.m. on YouTube. At 7, we go live on Twitch. And then after that, we're in the Discord all day. Links in the description below. We'll see you there. Take care. Peace.